So this is Algebraic Geometry Lecture 10, where we will be giving the proof of the Lasker-Nurter theorem and giving an example of it. So the Lasker-Nurter theorem um, states that um, for modules, for finitely generated modules, over notarian rings, um, naught is an intersection of primary submodules n, where I recall that n is primary means that m over n is coprimary. M over N co, this is so short we can get it onto one slide if we cheat slightly. So it has two steps. First of all, any submodule Um, and the proof of this um, is very easy. The proof, you can just write down in two words, notarian induction. So what this means is the submodules of M have this sort of notarian property that any non-empty subset has a maximal element, because that's true, because M is finitely generated over a notarian ring. And notarian induction sort of means you prove things by considering a maximal counterexample. So this means suppose um, N is a maximal um, module, submodule, sub among those that are not a finite intersection of irreducibles. Now, such a module, if, if the theorem isn't true, such a module must exist by um, uh, the notarian induction. On the other hand, um, either this module is irreducible, in which case we're done because it's an intersection of itself, or it's not irreducible, in which case it's the intersection of two larger submodules. And by induction, each of these two largest submodules must be a finite intersection of irreducibles, so we're done. So step one is just completely routine. Step two takes a little bit more effort. It says any irreducible submodule um, N is um, primary. Um, and to prove this, um, we can reduce to the case N is zero just by quotienting out by N. And so we have to show um, that we want to show that um, um, if naught is irreducible, so we want to show that if the submodule naught is irreducible, this implies um, M is coprimary. Well, uh, that's quite easy because if M is not coprimary, 
Um, this implies there are two associated primes. P and Q, so M has submodules of the form R over P and R over Q. This is a bit sloppy. It doesn't mean R over P is a submodule. It means that R over P is isomorphic to a submodule, but it's fairly clear what it's meant. And the intersection of these two submodules is zero because the annihilator of any non-zero element in this submodule is P, and the annihilator of any non-zero element in this submodule is Q, so they must have intersection zero. So this implies um, naught is not irreducible. Okay, so there's the proof. Ask and note, missing out one or two details, but it's an enormous improvement on the 100 pages that Lasker originally took. Now let's look at an example of this. Let's look at the ideal generated by x, y, and y squared in the ring of polynomials in two variables over. Except the set y squared equals zero. Well, y squared equals zero is just the same as y equals zero. But it's not quite the same, and somehow it, it, it's a sort of slightly thicker version of y squared equals zero. So it's sort of the y axis doubled up like this in some informal sense. I mean, it is just the y axis, but you should think of it as being a sort of rather thick version of the y-axis. Um, so the intersection of these two sets is going to look like, it's going to look like this. Well, the intersection will just be the y, oops, sorry, not the y-axis, the x-axis. will be the x-axis, except near the origin you should think of it as being slightly thicker. It's got a sort of double point here. Um, now, strictly speaking, this doesn't really make sense because a double point of affine two space is really the same as a single point. But informally, we should think of this point as sticking up an infinitely small distance um, along the y-axis. Um, so geometrically, um, um, it's really just an irreducible set, but informally there's a little extra bit here. And you can detect that extra bit by looking at the primary decomposition of this ideal. So a primary decomposition of the Y just corresponds to the algebraic subset consisting of the x-axis. And the ideal xy squared just corresponds to the algebraic set consisting of a point, except you can sort of think of this point as being a slightly, slightly bigger than a point. It's really a sort of double point sticking up a bit. So the Metric example is something called an embedded component. So, so this ideal here is called an embedded 
component. And it's pretty obvious why that is true geometrically. So, so this point here is really embedded in the, in, in the line here. Um, Well, so we notice that this primary decomposition is not unique. Well, it's that, that, that there are some rather trivial ways in which it can be non-unique. You can just add extra um, primary ideals, but um, it's also non-unique non-unique in a rather more serious way for instance that the ideal x, the ideal x y y squared is not only equal to the intersection of the ideal y and x y squared so it's equal to the intersection of these it's also inter, it's also equal to the intersection of y and x plus y y squared um, so x plus y, y squared um, is a different ideal from this, and it's also co-primary, 